Giza out there in laptop and phone land. Hope you're having a lovely whatever portion of your day you might be in. Um, my name is Emma and um, I am going to um, share a little moon themed class. So um, right now in real time uh, it is the waning crescent moon and my sequence is designed to provide balance um, during that time of the moon cycle. So many different cultures have uh, many different ebbs and flows that are practiced uh, in sync with the ebbs and flows that the moon brings to our lives. And in the waning portion of the moon, uh, according to the um, uh, Tattva uh, Yoga and Svara Yoga um, traditions, we feel uh, like going within. So we don't feel like being physically active. Our more feminine side, our cooling side kind of starts to prevail and govern our daily activities and our urges and our impulses. And uh, when the moon um, starts to continue to go through its cycle, um, other forces start to become uh, more prevalent. Um, so in Svara Yoga, one of the ways we can tell um, which side is more dominant is by seeing which nostril is more open. Um, so if you bring your right hand um, thumb to your right nostril and just breathe in and out through the left nostril a few times. And then you can just pause, give the nose a little bit of a wiggle and then bring the right hand ring finger to the left nostril, breathe in and out a few times through the right nostril. So you might notice that either your right or your left is more open. And if you try the same thing again in an hour or two, you might find that the opposite nostril is open. So that is one of the ways energy kind of shifts um, from year to year, month to month, day to day, and even hour to hour. Uh, so we will come back to exploring that little flow through the nose at the end of the class. Um, for the beginning, I'd like to uh, just invite you to bring your pinky finger and your thumb together. Give your body a little bit of a rock. Find that nice firm seat here for just kind of an opening, centering, and meditative space. So with the pinky finger and the thumb together, we have the Hastamudra Bhudi, B-H-U-D-I, uh, in our hands. And this is fostering um, the balanced operation of fluid in the body. So this is connected to our Svadhisthana chakra, our sacral chakra. It is connected to our sense of creativity, to our capacity for reproduction. It's con connected to health in the pelvis. So you can imagine as you're breathing in and out here, your breath is behaving a little bit like a flow of water in the ocean. On the inhales, you can imagine the water receding away from the shore. And on the exhales, the waves cresting and crashing against the shore. If you have an ujjayi breath practice, you can bring that in and really get that wave-like sound in the breath. And if you're unfamiliar with ujjayi breath, you can just Keep the lips together, keep the two rows of teeth separated, and touch the tip of the tongue to the flesh just inside and above the top row of teeth. And then you can just release the hands and bring the index finger and the thumb together. You can inhale. On the exhale, think of the word sa or birth. Ring finger and thumb can come together, or sorry, middle finger and thumb can come together. Inhale. Exhale and think of the word ta or leg. Ring finger and thumb can come together. Inhale. 
Exhale, think of the word na or death. Pinky finger and thumb together, inhale. Exhale, think of the word ma or rebirth. Relax the hands, relax the breath. Bring the hands together at the heart center. And we'll explore three rounds of the sound om. Breathing in. So nice relaxed inhale through the nose and a sigh out through the mouth. And relax the hands and just bring the palms facing down. And if you are getting tired of your cross-legged position, you could switch into a kneeling position. It's not super comfortable for you to sit directly onto the tops of your feet. You can make a little throne of blocks and you can just come to sit on your throne. So whatever feels the most comfortable for you. And we're going to practice a little bit of Kapalabhati breath. So with um, this breath, the translation is um, shining skull breath, which I've always found a little bit of an elusive <laughs> explanation. Um, I found a beautiful explanation the other day of Kapalabhati breath, meaning a breath for um, enlivening or brightening the frontal lobes of the brain. So this is a way again of getting into our um, evolved, more empathetic, more compassionate part of the mind and to um, try and get away from kind of living in the lizard brain, the, the sort of um, brain stem and just beyond <laughs> part of the mind. It's an easy place to kind of get stuck in when we're under a lot of stress. Um, so we're gonna try three rounds, one of 11, one of 22, and one of 33. Um, this is a sacred number in the yoga practice. Um, it's a little hard to get used to when you're used to counting in increments of five or 10, but um, it uh, the the numbers that we use are um, they have a little bit of magic to them. So uh, I just reiterated this in the earlier segment that I taped about um, all the kriyas. Um, so um, kriya breath based kriyas um, often involve this drawing up and in of the diaphragm at the base of the lungs. And as a result of this action, it's not recommended for people who are expecting little ones because you're just putting a whole lot of pressure in a part of the body where um, your babe is trying to expand. Um, and you um, also need all that nice beneficial uh, neutrally flowing oxygen in your own body and your baby's body at this time. And um, likewise, if you have um, high blood pressure this is kind of a rising energizing practice that might kind of amplify your um, high blood pressure if it's not regulated by medication. So please just practice this mindfully. You can even visualize that you are practicing this rather than actually practicing it. And um, the mind is such a powerful place, you'll still get some nice benefit. Okay, so we're just going to take a nice inhale through the nose, sigh out through the mouth, inhale halfway, and begin. Nine, ten, and eleven. Nice big inhale. Relaxed exhale. You can pause and just notice. And if in that first round you found it was a little bit elusive, if you find that your tummy is trying to pop out on the exhale or the diaphragmatic space at the bottom of the lungs feels tight, you can slow down the count and on the exhales just gently massage as though you were um, kind of doing a very loving Heimlich, <laughs> and that will help to teach your body what it is that you want it to do. So we're going to try another set, a set of 22. So nice inhale through the nose, sigh out through the mouth, inhale halfway, and begin. Nine, ten, 
11. Two and a nice big inhale and relaxed exhale. Again, just pausing and noticing. So Kapalabhati breath helps us to also raise Kundalini energy. So you might notice that sense of kind of rising or elevating energetic quality in the body. So just let yourself notice whatever might be arising there. And then we're going to go into our final round, our set of 33. So nice inhale through the nose, sigh out through the mouth, inhale halfway, and begin. Eleven. Twenty-two. Thirty-three, and again, nice big inhale and relaxed exhale and easy breath here. Again, pausing and noticing, and when you're ready, you can start to come off your blocks, and we'll uh, move into a little bit of a warm up here. So, I'm um, coming into cat and cow. So you're gonna have flat palms, wide spread fingers, uh, knees right underneath your hips. Um, I have four layers of mat and carpet, so I'm quite comfortable there, but um, if you find your knees are not really comfortable against the floor, remember that you can bring a blanket underneath the knees. If you find your wrists are a little bit uncomfortable here, you can make um, fists, so gorilla fists, um, or you can even roll, roll, roll in front of your mat. Mine's chock full of buckles here. and. Um, you can uh, change the angle of your hand here so that your uh, wrists are not um, carrying a lot of the brunt of the weight out of your body. And then you're just gonna start to move back and forth between the cat and cow pose. So in cow pose, we're letting the belly sag, the tailbone is tipping up. The heart center is radiating forward instead of down towards the floor. And then in cat pose, we're reversing this. So we're letting the spine round up, the tailbone's going to tip down, the head and neck are going to tuck. So we're going to inhale as we move into cow. Exhale as we move into cat. And with our moon theme, there's a nice little um, breathing exercise we can add on here to really enhance the aspect of flow and water. So if you can visualize where your kidneys are, so kind of in the low back, below the rib cage, and above the pelvis, Maybe you can feel how when you come into cow pose, there's a little bit of compression in the area of the kidneys. And when you come into cat pose, there's a little bit of release. You can visualize your kidneys like two lovely kidney bean shaped pools of water that you are gradually cleansing with your movement and your breath. You can imagine them glowing with a lovely radiant blue light wrapping around the kidneys on the inhale. And on the exhale, you can say the sound chu, C-H-O-O, -O, and imagine anything um, that's no longer serving you in the area of the kidneys just being released and dropping out of the body. So inhales, wrapping the kidneys with a beautiful blue light. And exhales, pressing away anything you need to let go of. And inhale, glowing blue light. And exhale, squeezing out anything that needs to just leave. Beautiful. And then you can give those wrists a little bit of a break. So you can come back. Um, into a little bit of a kneeling position. If you want a little toe stretch, you can curl your toes under and then clasp the hands together. So you're making this lovely little intense kind of fierce prayer position with your hands. And then see if you can just imagine that you're drawing a figure eight um, on the wall in front of you with the tips of your knuckles. Just a nice little stretch for the wrists. 
And then you can pause and reverse the direction of the figure eight. And then you can squeeze. And if you have any arthritis, you're just going to let go. If you don't have arthritis, you're going to flick. So squeeze and flick, squeeze and flick, squeeze and flick. And again, if arthritis causes you pain, pain from um, strong movement, you can just try a little bit of gentle rolling here. Otherwise, if you're good to go, you can just shake out your wrists, shake out your arms, give your head a little bit of a roll, give your shoulders a little bit of a roll. And then we're going to come into a little bit more movement. So we're going to do something called um, Chandra Namaskar, which means moon salutations. Um, so these are moon salutations from um, Hari Dickman. There's a number of different moon salutations out and about in the world. Um, this is a, a variety that I really like. So um, honoring the moon, uh, in the evening and at this time of the waning crescent. So standing on the top of your mat, you can just give your knees a little bit of a wiggle. You can um, imagine that you are holding the moon in your hands. You can reach up and you can just reach for that moon way up there in the sky. A little bit of a back bend here. If it's comfortable to come into a deeper back bend, you can. If back bends are really not your thing, you can keep the spine in a more neutral position and just allow yourself to reach up. And then we're slowly gonna, with a little bend in the knees, sweep the hands down and sweep the chest down and allow ourselves to come into a little bit of a forward fold. And so keep a little bend in the knees here. Keep the hips more or less centered over the heels. If you're finding this full fold is a lot for you, if you have blocks handy, you can use the blocks for support for the hands. Otherwise, you can just allow yourself to dangle. You can give the head a little bit of a shake. Ah, and then you can slowly start to transition. So we're gonna come into a little bit of a lunge. We're gonna take the right foot back and we're gonna drop the right knee. Now, you have the option of just hanging out here um, in a little bit of a low lunge. Or if it's comfortable to come up, you can bring the shoulders up. And again, you might just hold here with your hands on your hips. Uh, I'm gonna work on a little bit of a toe curl here and you'll see why as this progresses. So right toes are curled. And then you can bring your hands up and again you can either reach for the moon looking forward or you can look up or if this right quadricep hip flexor area is warm enough you can um, come into a little bit of a back bend. So soft and easy breath here and then hands can find their way to the heart and then maybe to the blocks or to the floor. And we're gonna take the left foot back, curl the left toes under, and we're gonna sink back. So first time through, if you wanna just kind of sit on your haunches, that's fine. Or if you wanna come all the way down into a toes curled under child's pose, that is good as well. And then you can bring yourself up and you can bring right foot forward and again, Hands might be to the blocks, they might be to the mat, they might be to the thigh. You might feel comfortable coming a little more upright. Thigh or the hips, you can hang out here, or you can start to explore lifting. So again, you might have just the hands reaching for the moon, you might have the eyes gazing to the moon, or you might find a little back bend. But again, this is kind of predicated on what's going on in that left quadricep. So if it's still not super warm, then come into one of the gentler variations, reaching for the moon, bringing the hands down to the floor, bringing that right foot back, and making your way into your toes curled under child's pose. And then you're gonna float forward here. So you're gonna keep the toes curled under, and you're just gonna explore what's available. So starting to bring the hips past the knees, Maybe a little bit of wiggling here. Heart center coming through the hands. So very modified version of upward facing dog. And then you're gonna let yourself come back and rest the brow on the floor back into your modified child's pose. And then bringing yourself back to kneel. We still have the toes curled under. We're gonna reach the arms up for the moon. 
So again, maybe a gentle arm extension, maybe including the head and neck, maybe a little back bend if that's comfortable. And then you can either bring the hands to the floor to let the knees lift, or you can see if you can lift the knees without bringing the hands to the floor. We're going to reach for the moon. So the heels are gonna lower, the hands are gonna lift, hello ceiling. You might find a back bend or you might not. As you walk the hands to the heart, you're gonna walk the feet back to the top of the mat. And then we're gonna repeat into our side two. So side two, inhaling and reaching for the moon. And exhaling and folding down. Again, pause in Uttanasana. So this first few times through our forward fold, letting the body just enjoy the drape, the lengthening of the hamstrings, the releasing of the low back, the ease of the pose. Letting the left foot come back, you can keep those toes curled under. You can bring the hands again to rest at the floor or maybe coming to the thigh, maybe to the hips or the heart, maybe reaching up. If you're coming into that deeper back bend, pay attention to sensation in that left quadricep muscle, reaching for the moon, letting the hands find their way back down to the heart, all those layers of mat. Coming back down into your modified child's pose. And then the left foot coming forward. And again, maybe having the hands to the floor, to the thigh, to the hips, to the heart, reaching up, maybe looking up, maybe back bending, reaching for the moon, and then reaching for the earth, and coming back into your child's pose. And again, just gently and mindfully exploring as you let the hips come forward. You can keep the knees on the floor. You can keep the toes curled under. Bring a little bit of a wiggle and some movement in here. Make your way back into your child's pose. Drawing yourself up to that kneeling position. Again, reaching for the moon. Bringing the hands to the heart and maybe letting the knees lift. Reaching for the moon as we come up to stand. Exhaling, hands to the heart and walking to the top of the mat. And at the top of the mat, we're going to pause. So you're going to let the knees just soften. If you tend to lock your knees, just wiggle your legs till the knees soften a little bit. Bring your hands back down beside your hips. Bring your index finger and your thumb back together. And we're going to come back through our Satanama meditation. Truth is my identity. Inhale, index finger and thumb together. Exhale, sa. Inhale, middle finger and thumb together. Exhale, ta. Inhale, ring finger and thumb together. Inhale. Exhale, na. Inhale, pinky finger and thumb together. Inhale. And exhale, ma. Release the hands and shake out the hands and the legs, and we'll come back into Surya, uh, Surya Chandra Namaskar. So inhale as you reach for the moon, and exhale as you dive down. Dropping the right knee, inhaling and reaching for the moon, and exhaling and coming back into your child's pose. Right foot forward. Inhale and reach for the moon. And exhale and come back into child's pose. Inhale forward into up dog. So the knees may, can, may stay down or if it's comfortable, you can start to lift the knees off the floor, but you keep the toes curled under. So modified up dog. Exhale back into child's pose. Inhale in the kneeling position as you reach for the moon. Exhale and let the knees lift. Inhale and rising up, reaching for the moon. Exhaling, letting the hands find their way to the heart as you walk forward. Inhale and reach for the moon. Exhale, dive into Uttanasana. 
Left foot back, left knee down. Inhale and reach for the moon. Exhale and come back into child's pose. Toes curled under. Left foot forward. Inhale and reach for the moon. And exhale back into your child's pose. Into your uh, modified upward facing dog. Inhale and look up. Exhale, come on back to toes curled under. Child's pose, Balasana. Inhale and reach for the moon in your Bhadrasana or hero's pose. Exhale, hands to the heart and knees lift. And inhale into Tadasana, mountain pose, reaching for the moon. And exhale, hands to the heart and pause. Soft and easy breath. Feel the earth pulsing and radiating underneath your feet. Feel the sky radiant and alive above the crown of the head. Come back to Satanama. Index finger and thumb touching. Inhale and exhale. Sa. Middle finger and thumb touching. Inhale and exhale. Ta. Ring finger and thumb touching. Inhale. Exhale. Na. Pinky finger and thumb touching, inhale, and exhale, ma. And then our last time through right and left side sun salutation, I mean a moon salutation. And we're just going to add on one final little layer of um, optional challenge. So you can inhale and reach for the moon. And exhale, come into Uttanasana. So optional challenge is to take the right foot back, externally rotate the right toes, and instead of low lunge, inhale in Virabhadrasana 1 variation. And then exhale and bring yourself back into your toes curled under child's pose. Again, you might come into your low lunge or you can set yourself up for your Virabhadrasana 1 variation. Inhale, Vira 1, reach for the moon. And exhale back into your child's pose. Inhale, back bend of your choice. Modified or Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, Balasana. Inhale and reach for the moon. Exhale, let those knees float up. Inhale, coming up to Tadasana. And exhale, finding your way back to the top of your mat. And finally, left side leading. Inhale and reach for the moon and exhale, Uttanasana. Left foot back, optional Vira one leg position as you inhale and reach for the moon and exhale into toes curled under child's pose. Left foot forward, right foot rotating. Inhale, Vira one, reach for the moon. And exhale into child's pose. Inhale, up dog variation, toes curled under. Exhale, child's pose. Inhale, reach for the moon. Exhale, let those knees lift. Inhale, reach for the moon. And exhale, hands to the heart. And finding your way back into mountain. Tadasana. Little wiggle through the legs. Palms facing to the front. And coming back into our meditative connection. One more time as the index finger and the thumb touch. And inhale. Exhale, sa. Ring finger and thumb touch. Inhale. And exhale, ta. Uh, sorry, middle finger and thumb touching. Ring finger and thumb touching now. Inhale. Exhale, na. Pinky finger and thumb touching. Inhale. Exhaling, ma. Satanama. Truth is my identity. 
Just let the tips of each finger touch together, the tips of the thumbs touch together, a little bit of a touch at the heels of the hands in mountain pose. Again, feeling all that nice radiant energy coursing through the body. Nice inhale through the nose and a sigh out through the mouth. You can shake everything out. Awesome work. Grab a little drink of water. I am definitely going to do that. And we will come into a few more static poses. All right, so blocks, you can have your blocks handy for this. And um, we're gonna make our way back down to kneeling on the mat. And we're just going to play a little bit with different spinal positions from the lunge. So um, you can have your right foot forward and you're going to um, sink the hips forward a little bit here. If you're not feeling quite right on that left kneecap, you can just pick the leg up and kind of reset it. So we're comfortable and again, a blanket is an option. Left hand is going to stay on the block. Right hand is going to come to the thigh. So we're going to inhale here. And on the exhale, we're going to rotate a little bit over to the right. So you're welcome to stay here. This might be enough. You could bring your hand to the back of your hip if you're looking for something a little deeper. So just soft and easy breath here. Just enjoying a little bit of opening happening in that left leg. If you're wanting to go a little bit further, you could bend into the left knee. You could reach and hold on to that foot with uh, us right hand. I'm very confused right now. <laughs> it's like when you're little and you twist your hands up and someone tells you to wiggle a finger and you can't tell which one to wiggle. Ah, lots of nice release for the hips. So you can kind of unwind out of that shape and you can walk your blocks back and curl your right toes up. Keep a little bit of a bend in the right knee. Try not to hyperextend. Now you can stay right here if this is enough, or if you want to go a little further, you might bring your hands down off the blocks, but really just listening to the back of the knee joint and the right hamstrings. So is this a happy place? Are you pushing too hard? Sometimes knowing the difference is half the battle. All right, and then you can bring that leg back and you can come all the way down and you can just give your knees a little bit of a swivel. And then we'll do the same thing into our side two. And I'm just going to switch so I'm not talking to the wall. <laughs> um, so again, from your kneeling position, the left foot now can come a little further forward. You can bring your hands onto your blocks. And then letting the right hand remain on the block and the left hand coming to the left thigh. You're going to inhale here. And on the exhale, just a little rotation over to your left. So again, your hand might stay on the thigh or might come to the back. And you might find that your hips are different on each side. And so the rotation might not feel the same. It might feel easier on one side, harder on the other side. So try not to expect some kind of perfect symmetry from the body. Just really pay attention to what is there. And again, this might be as far as you go or you might explore lifting and holding and again pay attention so if you attempt a deeper variation and the body is screaming give yourself permission to come out there's no one else watching so there's no <laughs> no shame in listening to your own beautiful body so that it functions an optimal level for you all right so you can slowly unwind out of that you can walk the blocks back you can curl the left toes up and again you're going to keep a little bend in the left knee and you're just going to explore so just see how this feels here and if this is enough you're going to hang out here if you want to go a little further you can bring your hands to the floor so this feels tighter to me on this side than it did on the other side so i'm just going to really 
be mindful and just be kind. I'll just play a little bit here with my own little edge I'm finding. And then you can bring yourself back. So you can just pause in your kneeling pose and just notice how things are feeling here. And then we're going to play a little bit with our uh, downward facing dog. So upward facing dog brings lots of energy into the body. Downward facing dog can help us to kind of calm and settle that energy again. So in table pose, you can uh, just explore. So you can inhale and let the belly sink. Exhale, make your way back into child's pose. Inhale, draw forward, curl the toes under. Exhale, come up and back into downward facing dog. And then we're just gonna cycle through this flow a few more times. So inhale into cow, exhale into child's. Inhale into cow, exhale into downward facing dog, and inhale into cow, exhale into child's, inhale into cow, exhale downward facing dog, and then holding a downward facing dog. So rather than pushing a lot of weight into your own wrists, see if you can push some of the weight forward into kind of the front portion of the hand near the connection to the fingers, and then push the balls of the feet down into the floor. Keep a little bend in the knees. Imagine the hips reaching up towards the sky. It's a long line of energy from the hips through to the heels and from the hips through to the hands. And then you can drop yourself down, back into a kneeling position and rest. And that act of coming from um, upside down to right side up, you'll feel the inversion and then the reversion of the, the head. So just allow yourself to notice, give those wrists a little bit of a release. We've done a fair bit of back bending, and we're just going to do a wee bit more, and we're going to play with a variation of puppy dog pose. So you can have a block handy, um, just maybe a foot or so in front of your knees. And we're just going to play here. So you can bring yourself back up into table pose. You're going to bring the right hand forward, and you're going to bring the left elbow right underneath the uh, left shoulder. You might need to walk your knees back a little bit here. We're going to inhale here and on the exhale we're going to draw back. So the hips become aligned over the knees, the brow comes to the block, the right hand is pressing into the floor so the right elbow is lifted off the floor. If you have cervical spine issues um, you might find or shoulder injury you need to keep this arm more passive, this right arm. So Again, listen to that if that's what your body's asking for. Otherwise, really push into that hand and feel the energy coming up into the shoulder, into the outside edge of the right rib cage. If this is not enough, if that block is keeping your head too high, remove the block, press the head into the forearm, actively press, and oh yeah, release that nice tight line along the right side of the body from the wrist all the way through to the hip. And then just a little sort of finesse piece here. If you have a really um, saggy back here, it's nice in a way because it helps you feel the really tipped up tailbone that can eventually occur in our down dog if the hamstrings are not in the way of the pose. But pull the belly button in a little bit and feel the low back broadening. Good, and then you can bring yourself up and back 
and shake out your arms, roll out your wrists, twist out your spine a little bit, and then we're going to come into our side two. So again, a block in the event that you need it. Your left hand is forward, your right elbow is underneath your right shoulder, the block and the forearm are parallel. We're going to inhale here, and on the exhale, we're going to draw back, and again, have the brow to the block. Left hand is actively pushing, so the elbow's lifted, the shoulder's lifted. Again, if there's injury, you're going to just let that arm be more passive. And again, you're going to push the hand into the floor. Ah, feel that nice release up to the left shoulder, the left hip. If that block has become obtrusive at all, move the block to the side. And just enjoy that nice release up the left side of the body. And then bring yourself back again, and one more time, let it all go. Roll things out, just bring yourself in any nice kind of counter pose, motion or action that feels pleasant for the arms. And then one more variation before we start to get into a little bit more of a relaxed place here. So you can bring yourself back up into your slightly long stanced table pose. Again, have that block handy just in case. We're going to inhale here and on the exhale, we're going to bring the head back. Start with it at the block. So again, there's some length in the upper body. The hips are more or less aligned over the knees. Hopefully that's what it looks like on video. <laughs> again, you can pull the navel in a little bit. You can really root through the hands. And if you feel like the head is stuck up a bit high, you can take the block out of the way and bring the brow to the floor and just really get that big stretch into the area of the shoulders here. And then you can bring yourself up again and just briefly pause in your kneeling position. And again, just notice, so you've had a little bit of a touch of the brow center, a little bit of inversion of the head below the heart. Just enjoying those um, upright sensations again. All right, so you can remain in your kneeling position or if it's more comfortable, you can come into Sukhasana. And we're going to do one other little shoulder releaser here. So you can bring your hands into kind of a hitchhiker thumb position. Inhale here and on the exhale, open your arms wide to the side. Inhale and close. And exhale and open. And inhale and close. And exhale and open. And shake out the arms, shake out the legs, just letting everything be easeful here. And we're going to do one little pranayama practice and then come into a more settled space. So Chandra um, Vedasana. So this um, is a kind of counterpart to the more traditional version of this, which is Surya Vedasana, which is um, a sun piercing pose. And so this is moon piercing pose. So it's again, sort of dedicated to the more feminine side of the body or more feminine energy. You can bring your hand into either Nasagra Mudra with the index finger and the thumb to the brow or Vishnu Mudra with those two fingers curled in. We're gonna seal off the right nostril with the thumb and we're gonna inhale through the left nostril. Seal off both of the nostrils Tuck the chin and retain the breath. Lift the chin and release the right nostril and exhale. Release the right, open the left and inhale. Seal the nostrils, tuck the chin and retain the breath. 
Lift the chin, release the right nostril, and exhale. Seal the right, open the left, inhale. Retain the breath. Lift the chin, release the right nostril, exhale. Seal the right, open the left, inhale. Seal both nostrils, tuck the chin, retain the breath. Lift the chin, release the right nostril, exhale. Seal the right, open the left, inhale. Seal both nostrils, tuck the chin, retain the breath. Lift the chin, release the right nostril, exhale. Seal the right nostril, open the left nostril, inhale. Seal both nostrils, tuck the chin, retain the breath. Lift the chin, release the right nostril, and exhale. And then you can just release the hand from the brow. You can pause and notice any nice effects that may have arisen from your pranayama practice, from your movement, your asana, your meditation, your dhyana. Lots of nice aspects of the many limbs of yoga that you have explored within your practice during this session. So we're going to come into Shavasana. So blocks are an option under the knees just to kind of break up tension that sometimes will show up in the legs. A blanket is also an option. You can pop a blanket underneath your head or cover your body. And whichever variation you pick, you just want to make sure that you are cozy. So just able to rest here in a place where things feel heavy and settled. So just starting out here, just notice how the body feels. You can notice, maybe what we'll do is we'll explore both the right and the left side of the body. So right is our masculine sun oriented side and left is our feminine or moon oriented side. So let's just start with the right side and you can notice the right big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, all of the right foot, the right ankle, the right calf, the right shin, the right knee, the right thigh, the right buttock, the right waist, the right rib cage. Moving into the right hand, the right thumb, the right index finger, the right middle finger, the right ring finger, the right pinky, all of the right hand, and the right wrist, the right forearm, the right elbow, the right upper arm, the right shoulder, right side of the neck, right side of the jaw, right side of the head. Notice all of the right side of the body together. Bring your awareness to the left side of the brain. Notice that the left side of the brain is governing all of the activity, all of the awareness and sensation in the right side of the body. Move your awareness down to the left side of the body and notice the left big toe, the left second toe, left third toe, left fourth toe, and the fifth toe, all of the left foot, the left ankle, the left calf, the left shin, the left knee, the left thigh, the left buttock, the left waist, the left rib cage. Notice the left thumb, the left index finger, left middle finger, left ring finger, left pinky, 
all of the left hand, the left wrist, the left forearm, the left elbow, the left upper arm, the left shoulder, the left side of the neck, the left side of the jaw, the left side of the head, all of the left side of the body together. Bring your awareness to the right side of the brain and notice that the right side of the brain is governing all of the sensation, all the activity in the left side of the body. Notice the left side of the brain managing the right side of the body. Notice the right side of the brain managing the left side of the body. Notice both sides of the brain managing both sides of the body. Notice all of the brain and all of the body together. Notice the body heavy and settled against the floor in this space. Notice the subtle tickle of air brushing past the tip of the nose with every breath in and out. Notice how the breath starts to broaden and deepen and movement starts to come back into the body as you wiggle out fingers and wiggle out toes and stretch the arms out overhead and the feet out down below. So you are just waking up from a long, deep sleep. And then on your way out of this practice, I want you to do a little thing before you sit up. So you can close off your right nostril, breathe in through your left nostril. And then close off your left nostril and breathe in through your right nostril. If you find that one side was very congested, I want you to roll to that side. If you find that neither side was very congested, I want you to roll to your right side. And so this is a little trick for bringing a bit of balance into our right and left side. So you're going to should say roll to your right side if you're practicing this at night just before you go to sleep you can roll to your left side if you're practicing this in the morning and you want to wake up more you're going to take your top hand and you're going to tuck it into your armpit and you're going to squeeze the pectoral muscle a little bit and you're just going to hang out here so if you're having trouble sleeping at night this is a really cool little tool you can use if you're lying on your right side, it will make the left side become more open, the more passive cool side, it will help you with sleep. If you're having trouble getting going in the morning, <laughs> you can do the opposite. You can roll onto your left side and you can squeeze your uh, left pectoral muscle with your right hand. Okay, and then you can just come out of that, bring yourself up. To your seated posture and I have one little reading to share before we close the class tonight so this is the waning crescent moon I am the waning crescent moon I take time to restore as I move into stillness and darkness I am thankful for this lunar month and all of the light I have shined upon the world have gratitude in your heart and move into the new moon with an open mind Nurture yourself and rest. Your work is now done and a new month will begin again soon. And so as always, I'd like to thank all the yogis through time who brought the practice here before us today. To thank those around us for sharing in the community of practice. And most importantly, thank yourself. We'll close our class with one final shared ohm. Breathing in. 
As you feel ready, relaxing the eyes and the hands open, inhale and reach the arms up. And exhale, bring the hands to the heart. Namaste. Take care, beautiful yogis. Hope to see you again soon.